Okay, so I want to preface this video by saying that Ally Switch is fair game in VGC. I'm not a scrub, I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, but having complaints about how the move functions in the game and is implemented within the game is different than saying that that's why you're losing or the only reason you lose. That would be a scrub argument. Um, I think that there's valid complaints against Ally Switch and I want to cover those in today's video. There's really no arguing that it's balanced for competitive. Uh, it's more of an opinion as to whether or not uh, good or bad players use the move. So this video won't be going into that. It'll be going into why it's not balanced for competitive. So yeah. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another VGC 2021 video. Uh, today, like I said, I'm going to be talking about Ally Switch and there's good reason for it. Uh, people on Twitter right now are talking about it because of this clip that Paul Chua posted uh, where he ally switched a Porygon 2 for a Venusaur causing the Porygon 2 to take a completely non-effective ghost move and the Urshifu to go for a close combat into the Venusaur which absolutely resisted it uh, giving the Venusaur pretty much a free turn. Now on the surface that sounds like you know pretty good VGC play you know they made a good play um, and I'm not going to argue against that but the thing is, uh, it's it's more ally switch as a move is the issue and not that particular play. So let's go and get into it. It's going to be a interesting video, trust me. So if you guys enjoy this name point in time, leave a like and hit subscribe to the channel, turn notifications because I'm bringing you guys some daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. And yeah, I have some notes here. It'll be sort of free form what I'm saying, but I'm going to go off my notes. I'm going to be showing some resources and... It's just going to be explaining why this move is not healthy for competitive and what needs to be changed to fix it. So let's go ahead and get into it. So what does Ally Switch do? Exactly what it says in the can, Ally Switch switches your allies. <laughs> so if you have a Shed Ninja and a Porygon 2 in the field, Shed Ninja switches places with Porygon 2, Shed Ninja ends up taking whatever move was intended for Porygon 2, Porygon 2 takes whatever move was intended for Shed Ninja. Doesn't sound too unbalanced on the surface, but when you get beneath the hood, when you understand how Ally Switch works, is when you sort of see why the move isn't really balanced for a competitive format. So what makes Ally Switch different from other redirection moves? Because some will argue that it's just another form of redirection, there's nothing busted about it. When you look at the other redirection moves, Rage Powder and Follow Me, they're so limited in their distribution that the Pokemon that carry them will pretty much always have them on the move set. In fact, I have the statistics here. Amoongus at 99% Rage Powder usage, Volcarona at 79% Rage Powder usage, Butterfree at 79, Tangrowth at 54, Tangle at 99, Ndidi at 99 for Follow Me, Togekiss at 96, Clefable at 99, Clefairy at 98, and Togetic at 99. These are all the Pokemon that can viably use the move. That is literally all of them. So when you see this list of literally 10 Pokemon, you can assume that they're carrying these moves. An experienced player will know, ah yes, these Pokemon click Follow Me. These Pokemon click Rage Powder. Ally Switch is a completely different situation. There's essentially only two Pokemon you can assume have Ally Switch, and I'll get into why that is. Uh, but Shed Ninja, literally 90% of them are carrying Ally Switch. That's hilarious, for one. <laughs> Literally 90% are carrying this move, and Cresselia at a solid 60%, you can assume it carries it. Uh, Comfey, a little less certain, you can assume it carries it at 44%. I'd say those are healthy percentages where you can try to make an ally switch read on Team Preview and not have them reveal it first. Pokemon like Porygon 2, 9%, Rotom, 14%, and that, that isn't really the issue. The fact that, you know, not many Pokemon carry it consistently it is the sheer number of Pokemon that get Ally Switch. I want you to just, uh, we're just gonna scroll through this. I'm not gonna say anything about it, but I'm just gonna scroll through it so you can understand the sheer amount of Pokemon that could be running this move, and honestly would if they had an open move slot. All of these Pokemon are capable of just slapping it onto a move slot. There is no predicting it on Team Preview. You just can't with most of these Pokemon. There are like three that you can probably predict it with. That is sort of one of the core issues at the move. It's way too widely distributed. Any Pokemon can ally switch. Did you know that Cinderace can ally switch? Imagine you're facing a Cinderace team. What does Cinderace typically carry? Well, we can check that on Picolytics right now. Cinderace will typically carry Pyro Ball, High Jump Kick, Bounce, Sucker Punch. Those are the top four moves, the moves that you can typically assume on a Cinderace. Let's scroll down a bit. 
Ally Switch is so rare that it's listed under other with the 18 percentage of, of the other moves. The fact that it can run it, and I have seen it used, is a testament as to how annoying Ally Switch can be. At any moment, pretty much any Pokemon could just whip out the Ally Switch and swap places the opponent. Now, that isn't entirely awful because, you know, any Pokemon has, any, any Pokemon has, like, Tackle, you know? They can just whip out Tackle, surprise. Any Pokemon has Ice Beam, they can just show you Ice Beam, surprise. Um, the issue comes with the mechanics of Ally Switch compounded with that. So, I have a couple of things here. I, I made a little bit of a list of valid complaints with Ally Switch. Um, so, it's only bypassed by two Pokemon, Bear, Scuta, and Duraldon, because of their abilities Propeller Tail and Stalwart. Barrascuta and Duraldon aren't going to make their way onto the majority of teams entirely for the counterplay of Ally Switch and other redirection moves. Um, in fact, they're not even that viable in that in this format. They're not common, so uh, they're not going to be thrown onto a team entirely for that reason. Uh, on top of that, the difference between Ally Switch and other redirection moves is that there's a huge consequence for using the redirection move that isn't Ally Switch. Like Follow Me and Rage Powder, they have huge consequences for the redirection user. So Rage Powder and Follow Me will redirect both moves into the redirection user. Whatever moves were intended for whatever Pokemon, they're both going into the redirection user, meaning that they're going to sustain a heavy amount of damage or maybe take a status. I would call that a pretty fair and balanced trade for such a powerful move to completely protect a Pokemon for a whole turn. Now, this also comes with the caveat of if the redirection user can't take more than one of the moves, if it goes down with the first move, the second move will go into the Pokemon it was intended to go into, knocking, knocking out the uh, redirection user and dealing damage to the Pokemon anyways. Ally Switch does not have that going on for it. Ally Switch, because it switches the two Pokemon entirely, you could have, like that example I had, you could have like a Shed Ninja and a Porygon 2 next to each other. What move do you want to use on a Shed Ninja? Obviously a Ghost type move. What move do you want to use on a Porygon 2? Obviously a Fighting type move. If they Ally Switch, both of those moves have the potential to be immune and essentially nothing happens. There's, there's very little risk in that. Uh, and on top of that, because it's such a powerful move to use on any given turn, you actually gain as much from clicking it as you do from just revealing it turn one. You don't have to click it anymore. Your opponent already knows there's the potential at any point in time, as long as that ally switch user is on the field, for the Pokemon to switch places and completely nullify a turn. That is disgusting. The mind games that come with the move are just way too much to be considered competitive when it is a pure 50-50. Alice Switch does not have a chance to fail if used consecutively. You can spam it every single turn if you want. You could use it once and never again. I would say that Alice Switch, its three main purposes in the game beyond, you know, protecting a Pokemon, are sort of a metagame thing. So, I would say that, and by metagame I mean in in reference to gameplay itself and not the actual game so ally switch has a use as sort of a crutch for inexperienced players they will likely put ally switch on a random pokemon because why not it'll help them out with you know harder matchups just because that that mind game is a little bit a little bit much for the opponent at times um it's also a crutch for not very well built teams a very poorly built team has the potential to come out again uh, to come out on top against a strong team purely because Alex which is an option and the opponent might have to read it once in a while or maybe they just don't know it's there and it gets whipped out in the last turn and they manage to make a comeback because of it I'd say that's one of the more valid reasons to use it uh, and finally the the last usage is to tilt the opponent you can literally click Alex switch once and the opponent will forever have to consider that when clicking a move the 50 50 is a lot of pressure in this game so that's that's another thing. It's it's a metagame reason to use it. Crutch for team building, crutch for inexperienced players, and to tilt the opponent. That's <laughs> I would say that's enough of a reason to change how it functions because that shouldn't be how a move works. Um, and on top of that, another issue along with the wide distribution, the 50-50, and all this other stuff is that the move isn't even based on speed. The move has plus two priority. Mind you, that means that the slowest Pokemon in the game, or yeah, the slowest Pokemon in the game, we could go with like Stack Attacka, who also gets it. Stack Attacka, slow, 
13 speed. It's not the slowest, but it's still really slow. Has the potential to ally switch before any other move can come out because it's plus two priority. That is faster than quick attack. That is faster than taunt. Even prankster taunt cannot prevent an ally switch. So if you want to prevent an ally switch, not only do you have to taunt the user, but you have to call the ally switch on the turn that you taunt. That is too much for this move to be considered competitive in any, in any capacity, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I've gone through a couple of things so far. It's only bypassed by two Pokemon. There's not much consequence for using it. You benefit as much from clicking it as you do from not clicking it. It has priority faster than taunt or anything else like that. Counterplay, the, the only real counterplay to this move is to make safe plays, which is granted like that's that's something that you should be doing anyways um but it discourages reads it, it discourages you from like going for a super powerful move if the consequence is for that move to do nothing granted once the ally switch is revealed you could try to call the ally switch but your opponent is just as likely to call you calling the ally switch so they don't switch at all and you end up just going for a super effective fighting type move that, that would have knocked out the Porygon 2 into a ghost type like Dusclops that does absolutely nothing and you lose an entire turn. It is not worth, it's not worth it to make that risk. So that, that's a big thing about it. Um, yeah, so that, that's really my main issues with it. It's too widely distributed. Uh, you can't really tell when it's coming out. It has too much priority, all those sort of things. So how do we fix it? How do we make it so Ally Switch is not a hated move? Um, there are a couple of ways to do that. I would say that there are three steps that could be taken to fix the move. For one, remove the priority from the move. There's no reason that Stack Attacka without Trick Room should be able to ally switch for like a Cinderace and make it so the Cinderace doesn't have to take an attack. That, that's, that's a bit much. Make it speed based so there are better ally switch users and there are worse ally switch users. Second of all, um, it shouldn't be as widely distributed. If the amount of ally switch users was literally as small as any other list of Pokemon. If it was like, if this were the list of ally switch users, guess what? When you see the stack attack, when you see the Cinderace, when you see the Cresselia, the Rotom Heat, the Comfey, the Dusclops, one of the first things that should come to your mind is ally switch because they are one of the few Pokemon that get it, making it a highly sought after move, just like Rage Powder, just like Follow Me. You consider it on team preview and it's much easier to call. In fact, the usage of the move would likely go up on these Pokemon because it's not an option on many other Pokemon. That's that's the effect that it would have there. And finally, I would say that Ally Switch should not be able to be used consecutively even with these two nerfs. And some people have suggested Ally Switch should have the same chance to fail as Protect or Detect, which if you don't know is 30%. It has a 30% chance to fail consecutively. Or not that. It has a 30% chance to actually work consecutively, so it has a 70% chance to fail pretty much. I would say that that's not the right way to balance it. I think it should always fail consecutively, and that's because if it only has a chance to fail consecutively, it could punish the opponent for reading the move. Your opponent could read the ally switch used consecutively and then get punished because it failed. That is probably the worst feeling anyone could have in a competitive game, making the right call but getting punished because of game mechanics out of both players' controls. That, that could be very annoying. So I'd say that's really all I have to say on the move. I, I don't hate people for using it. I get annoyed when I lose to it. Uh, and I think that the move is absolutely not competitively balanced. But uh, I would say that, you know, it's in the game. You can use it if you want. It's fair play, but um, I, it definitely needs to be changed in some kind of new game. Like if we get generation nine games, I would love to see them remove the priority entirely and just lower the amount of Pokemon that get it because it's way too many right now. So yeah, um, this is sort of a, a free worded video. There wasn't much form to it, but I wanted to put my thoughts out there for today's video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you like Ally Switch? Do you hate it? Do you think it's fine the way it is? I think that if you think it's fine the way it is, you're not too experienced in the game. That's just, that's kind of the consensus of the competitive community that it's, it's not fine. Um, but it's okay to not be okay, you know? <laughs> so yeah, uh, with that, I'm going to call it guys. Have a nice night. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like on it. I'll see you guys in the next one.